Well, welcome to ClearCast. This is episode 38. And uh, really excited about our guest today um, that uh, Jeff and I get a chance to to speak with. And that is Frank Rode, who is the CEO and co-founder of Onify. Uh, Onify is a fractional home ownership company that partners socially conscious investors. I'm looking forward to diving into what that means. Uh, with qualified first-time home buyers to buy their home brick by brick. And Frank has worked in the financial services industry for more than 20 years. Uh, it was stints at FICO and uh, Nomis before founding Onify in 2022. Frank, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I, um, you know, I, there's so many topics here that I'm excited about digging into and, and, uh, and you, you and I have had some good brainstorming sessions uh, over the past couple of years. But, you know, before we get into like what Onify does, like, first of all, like, who are you? <laughs> Why are you here on this earth? No, I'd, I'd love to hear like, you know, what, you know, how do you describe yourself? How did you get started in real estate? Um, and and why uh, what led you to Onify? Yeah, of course. Um, so thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. And um, just going back, I guess, to my story. Um, I came here from Germany originally, so uh, came here for college um, on the East Coast, went to Penn, and then uh, moved to San Francisco, and you know started work um, in in financial services consulting with Oliver Wyman, and then started an online insurance company with a couple of others. And eventually ended up at, uh, or not ended up, spent some time at FICO, at digging into uh, credit risk and decisioning um, uh, for a lot of the banks and mortgage lenders. So that was kind of the entry point. Um, but the reason I bring that up is one of the early things I did when I first got to San Francisco, eventually I bought a condo, right? And didn't have enough money for the down payment. Um, got some help from my parents. Uh, and still very thankful for that, right? And so they helped with the down payment. Eventually, I paid it back. And that's kind of a story that stuck with me right, 15, 20 years ago now, saying, you know, why is someone with a good income and good career uh, need help from, from family? So we'll come back to that. But that was that kind of planted the seed that of what eventually became Onify um, uh, a number of years later. So from uh, FICO, I was recruited into a startup um, and eventually ran it as CEO, uh, a company called No Miss Solutions. Um, spent the last 15 years there until a, a little over a year ago. Um, and No Miss built the pricing engine for a lot of the large mortgage lenders. So we were you know, deep in the bowels of mortgage pricing and how lending products more broadly work. Uh, sold this platform to you know, Wells Fargo and Truist and US Bank and the Canadian banks, Australian banks. Um, so really got deep into um, the, the mortgage and you know, loan pricing problem. Um, and one of the things I started seeing more and more in the data um, was the challenge that the first time buyer has, young folks in particular, who are going out and are pulling together you know, their savings, maybe some help from family and a mortgage, and they're trying to buy a house right, or a condo, you know, what have you. And, um, and what we're seeing in the data is that that was getting harder and harder. So Average age of the first-time buyers started getting you know higher and higher. The win rate of first-time buyers um, was getting lower. And as as I dug into this, realized there is a kind of systemic issue here that is squeezing first-time buyers out of the market. And that was two years ago. Um, so noodled on the idea with my co-founder, and eventually, then I'd sold Nomis. Um, uh, and eventually left Nomis to start Onify, uh, raised venture funding. Um, and started working on this about a year and a half ago, and we launched uh, in May of this year, May of 23, in Raleigh. So it took us about a year to build the core construct. Um, but really, that that kind of the genesis, right, of um, working in financial services, in mortgage pricing, in, in kind of lending analytics led to what was eventually um, Onify. And in a roundabout way, it's, it's helping solve the problem that I had solved myself with my family 15, 17 years ago, right, um, when I bought my first condo. And that, by the way, is, is what most people do today, right? More than 50% of first-time buyers get help from family in some way, shape, or form. But if you think about it, that's also a highly regressive system, right? It basically means that home ownership perpetuates from people who have money and people who have the ability to get family to help. Um, and we're not solving what is 
you know, one of the, the big kind of inequities, right, in the U.S. and globally, quite frankly. So anyway, before we dive into that, that's the that's kind of my background. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, dialing in from, you know, my home office in San Francisco. That's really, yeah, re really interesting. I, I like this idea of basically a company that's dedicated to um, scaling up the concept of the helpful parent. I mean, that's right. essentially what you're doing. You're, you're making that the helpful parent available to the whole world. Um, so that that is interesting. So let's dig into the model in a little more detail. Can you give us a, a bit of a breakdown of how does it work for the home buyer? What are um, what what are they bringing to the table? And then what is Odify bringing them? And how does that relationship evolve over time? Yeah, yeah. So I, just, be, uh, Jeff, just before I dive into that, um, maybe a little bit more about just the problem and the, the timing today, right? And that kind of then evolves into how we're helping the first time buyer. Basically, you've got a bunch of things coming together, right? Home prices are the highest they've been in really almost recorded history, right? Relative to incomes. If you look at the average price of a single family home in the US relative to the median income, it's higher than it's been in something like 70 years, right? So you've got high home prices. Now, more recently, you have high mortgage rates, right? The 30 year fixed at hovering around 8% which we haven't seen in 22, 23 years, something like that. You have um, student debt, which has built up, right? And it puts a burden on, on first-time buyers. A lot of first-time buyers with college degrees have also um, student debt payments that just kicked back in in October of this year after, after the hiatus there. Um, you have, through the tax changes of 2018, effectively done away with um, the mortgage interest deduction, right? It's now standardized, basically the, the, the standard deduction, right? And most first time buyers don't itemize their tax return. So you've got all these things coming together, right? Um, that are making it harder for the first time buyer to save the down payment or to afford the monthly payment. And then at the same time, you have a market that's still competitive where you have a lot of cash buyers, whether those are individuals or institutional buyers, and the net effect of all of that is when we looked at the data, let's say in Raleigh Durham, where we launched, the likelihood of someone winning um, a bid with a what I would call a you know rickety financing solution, say an FHA mortgage or a down payment assistance, right, or a low down payment mortgage, the likelihood of that buyer winning a deal was something like 15, 20 percent three, four years ago. Last year, 2022, it was 2% of all transactions in, in Raleigh, right, as, a, as one of the example markets. And so that's the that's the kind of base, basic problem we're looking to solve, right? And then to your question, how does Onify help this? Um, we help in a couple of ways. One, we allow the first-time buyer to come in with 2% as a down payment. So we significantly lower the hurdle of coming up with, you know, usually a 10 or, or sometimes 20% down payment. Um, we uh, turn the first time buyer into a cash buyer. So we have a very strong value prop with regards to the realtor that works with the buyer and mm -hmm. with regards to the seller that is looking to sell the home. We're coming in basically saying, we're an all cash buyer. We have a guaranteed close. And we can lean in with things like due diligence money, which is a North Carolina you know, construct. Um, or uh, earnest money and be aggressive about the terms, the time to close, right? And basically not have any sort of financing contingencies in the offer. So that that helps the first time buyer. And then we basically create this on-ramp where for this five-year program we've built, um, the buyer is guaranteed a single fixed payment uh, regardless of what happens with interest rates um, and regardless of what happens to the home itself. So we cover things like property taxes, insurance, repairs, maintenance, right, during that five-year period. And that creates certainty around the, the housing payment, right? And doesn't create this risk that that first-time buyers are worried about. If, you know, I'm leaning in, I'm spending all my money on a home, and then something breaks, right? I need to fix the water heater or, or you know, have the roof repaired. Um, so that's the basic value prop, right? And we, we basically say to the, to the first-time buyer, we can help you be a cash buyer with 2% down, um, with no surprises, right, over that five-year horizon. And um, and Onify is really designed around an on-ramp for that first-time buyer, right, uh, to help overcome what otherwise would be the time to save uh, for that down payment. 
So, so obviously, I mean, there's there's a challenge on both ends right now. Right now, there's there's a challenge on the down payment because of the, you know, the resilience, if you will, of high home prices. Um, and actually, Raleigh. It's kind of interesting that you pick Raleigh because Raleigh is one of the fastest appreciating, you know, areas over the past three years or so. Um, that's been incredible. In, you know, it's, it's like always near the top of the charts or was. Um, yep. um, but uh, you know, so you've got the the issue with the high home prices um, and limited supply, which which you still have to compete. But then we've got mortgage rates close to eight percent right now um, for that fix. You know, which you know, to, even if you have the money for the down payment, the ability to afford, you know, the the mortgage at that rate. How do you how do you make that c competitive? Um, uh, the the payment is is, yeah. is, that, is that somewhat in the ballpark where people can can afford that versus a mortgage? Yeah. So the 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 real innovation here um, around Onify as a structure is that we allow the customer to buy the home as equity. So when we say brick by brick, right? Purchase your home brick by brick. What we're doing is we're taking individual homes and we're fractionalizing them into 10,000 bricks. Now, what is a brick? A brick is a share effectively um, in the LLC that holds title to the home. So it's a vehicle, right? Of owning um, a fractional interest, um, one basis point or one one hundredth of a percent mm -hmm. of the home itself, right? And the customer, as I mentioned earlier, puts down 2%, 200 bricks on day one. And then over five years, um, builds incremental equity by buying more bricks. So on average, the first time buyer buys 13 bricks per month, which gets you to 160 bricks per year. Over five years, that's 800 bricks plus the 200 you buy up front. That gets you to 1,000 of the 10,000 bricks or 10% equity ownership. But because it's equity... There's a couple of pieces that are, that are, or, or a couple of things that are happening. One, um, the the bricks are purchased at the current market value of a brick, which is driven by the current market value of a home, right? And this is actually where we use Clear Capital to run the AVMs, right, on a monthly basis to say what is the value of each home every month, and that's the value at which we transfer bricks to the buyer, right? Because it's valued every month, there is no debt involved, there's no mortgage involved, and there is no principal to repay. There's just the ability to buy bricks over time, right? And if you think about it, basically what we're doing is we're allowing the customer to dollar cost average the purchase of the home, right? If home prices fall, that monthly payment buys more bricks. If home prices go up, that monthly payment buys slightly fewer bricks, just like you would buy shares in a mutual fund, right? Or or if you have an investment account. And, and so because we're doing this over time, over a five-year horizon, right? The the rises and dips in home prices or the variations that you have in a market kind of balance themselves out, right? And the customer ends up with 10%. So, so because there is no debt involved, there's also no interest rate. However, you have to live in the whole house. You can't just live in the house, in the, in the, the fraction, right? The, the small amount <laughs> that you've bought up front. So this is where other investors come in, right? Again, back to the 10,000 bricks, the customer buys 200 on day one. We finance a fraction of the bricks and then we source investors to buy and hold the remaining bricks, right? So a brick is actually a security, a, a private security that is qualified by the SEC under a Reg A exemption. Mm -hmm. um, so that's publicly filed at, with the SEC. And what that allows us to do is sell those bricks to other investors. And those investors, while holding the brick, are getting paid rent on those bricks. So mm -hmm. Onify, effectively, by virtue of fractionalizing these homes, is creating a partial rent and partial ownership structure, where the bricks that you own, as a first-time buyer, you own. The bricks that you don't own, you rent and you pay rent on those fractions, right? And that rent is market rent. So it is today actually lower than mortgage rates, right? Um, at 8%. Um, and that's one of the benefits, right? So Kenan, to your question, long-winded answer to your question. If you go to the website today and you compare this to um, financing the same home with a mortgage, our monthly payments are actually slightly lower in addition to the down payment being lower. Yeah. 
Interesting. So you mentioned the investors. Um, obviously, they're an important part of the equation. Um, and you mentioned that, that they are socially conscious investors um, for first time home buyers. So how does Onify source those investors and what does it mean to be a socially conscious investor? Yeah, great question. So there's two types of investors um, that fund homes or that buy the bricks right for for each of the homes. Uh, the first one is what we call the, the circle of trust. So these are folks that know the Oni, right, the customer, right, the mm -hmm. first time buyer. So that could be family, could be friends, the community, maybe their congregation, right? Um, I folks who know you um, and have some amount of trust, therefore circle of trust. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, that is actually very similar to what uh, what I did uh, and what a lot of other you know first time buyers do, so they get some, they get a little bit of help from their network, from their family. Mm. Only what we're doing here is we're putting a, a contractual structure around this, and we're doing this through a security right that is qualified with the SEC. And what that means is that you can you can expand that circle to include people who maybe want that contract in place, right? Want the ability to say, okay, I, I have a wallet, I have the ability to track my ownership. I see the valuation every month, and then I get, you know, my quarterly rental income through the brick holdings. And so, first group is really the the call it circle of trust, and then the second group is what we call socially conscious investors. What does that mean? It means folks who want to invest in a security or in an opportunity that does some good in the world, right? And that helps first time buyers um, achieve, you know, or jump that kind of housing affordability hurdle. Um, and we've had folks who say, I like the idea of putting money into real estate. I like the idea that in addition to a return, I'm helping solve a problem, right? Rather than make this problem worse. Um, we've had some investors who've said, I want to specifically fund homes for minorities or in a particular town or in a neighborhood in a particular town that I'm interested in supporting, mm -hmm. right? So there are a number of different uh, underlying drivers and reasons for an investor to come in and say, I like putting capital to work. And in addition to potential return, right, home price appreciation and, and, and rental income, I can also do something good with my money. I, I, I like that a lot. I, you know, I know that there's, you know, these, these new types of models, which, you know, it's, it's a very different structure than, uh, than a mortgage. And so it takes some, a bit of explaining and, and everything. And, and then there's, you know, there's there's been quite a bit of, um, uh, you know, discussion around, you know, institutional investors coming in and buying homes, and you know, more on the single family rental, you know, side of things. So there's there's this natural sort of, perhaps, you know, um, uh, hesitation, if you will, uh, around different structures to say, is this actually the right thing for the for the home buyer? Are they going to be okay? You know, um, uh, you know, how do you communicate this out in a way that, um, you know, maybe it's more around the exit strategy, like after five years, but yeah. in a way it makes people feel comfortable and, and understand that, that, uh, hey, you're, you really are here for the mission and not to um, take advantage of a first time home buyers. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great point. I think, one, we're innovating in a space that has used the same basic product for 70 odd years, right? The mortgage has been around literally 70 some years. And you know, most people don't fully understand how a mortgage works, but everyone has one, your parents had one, right? The government backs it. So it's safe, um, reasonably safe, right? And, and most people don't really worry about that. So we're in a, you know, we're building a different path here. And a lot of what we're doing is around education, right? Consumer education, we rely heavily on the realtors. Um, to explain to their first-time buyers how this works. Um, and then obviously a lot of it is just um, sitting down with customers, right? And explaining exactly how this works, um, publicizing the case studies and the the successful ONIs that are out there on our website or elsewhere, right? Saying, hey, this works and and here's um, here are the benefits and here are the things that, that maybe you don't get, right? Compared to the traditional approach. And so we want to be very transparent around that as well. So you ask the question, what happens after five years? Uh, so we launched a year and a half ago, or you know, this year kind of um, uh, fully outright. So we haven't had anyone uh, come to the end of the program. But what the intent here is, is that 
With 10% equity at the end of five years, once you've built up 10% equity in the home, you now have enough equity to qualify for a traditional mortgage. So mm -hmm. the golden path, as we call it, is for the customer to build equity, live in the home, uh, maybe build their credit, but certainly build equity. And at the end of five years, they can go out and get a, a standard conforming 30-year fixed rate mortgage and buy out the remaining investors. So part of the contract is effectively that purchase option that allows the, the home buyer, the ONI, to buy out the, the home from the, the, the investors that hold the 90% at that point still left. And that is not going to be a competitive bid situation because there's only one buyer. It's the ONI, right? They can take all the time they need to get their mortgage in place and they will be able to buy the home at the then current market value. And again, because we're treating each home as equity, right? Home value can home will fluctuate, right? Um, and we peg the value at the end of five years. And at that value, the customer can buy out the equity. That's the golden path. The other path is that the customer says, okay, maybe I'm not ready yet, or maybe I don't want to buy the remaining equity and I'm happy to stay in the program and we renew for another five years. You keep building equity, you stay in the program. And then the third path is that you decide to take your equity and move out and you know move somewhere else, maybe buy a different home. In that case, we will buy back the customer's equity hmm. at the same valuation, but we charge a 2% relisting fee effectively. Um, and then put the home on the market to sell it. Right? So, so the equity build mechanism is really important here in that it builds the equity for down payment, as well as a you know savings nest egg um, that the customer can use. Now, because there is no debt involved, one of the interesting things that happens here is we call this evergreen equity. The equity that you build in the home, right? Let's say you have five and eight and then ten percent. That obviously can value that that the value of that equity can fluctuate. It can go up and can go down. It is highly, highly unlikely that it'll ever go to zero mm. because there's no mortgage balance, right? You can't be underwater like you could be with a traditional mortgage, oh, yeah. right? mm -hmm. where you buy a four hundred thousand dollar home with three hundred and sixty thousand dollars worth of debt, and that the home value falls to three hundred. Now you're sixty thousand dollars underwater, right? Mm -hmm. With an equity based scenario, you own ten percent of four hundred thousand. That's that that value could go from 40 to 36 or 30,000, but it's not going to go to zero, right? And so that's a way in which we protect the first time buyer. The flip side is also that, you know, as values increase, um, the the a portion of the value increase goes to the investors, right? And the another portion goes to the first time buyer. So they don't have the benefit of leverage on the upside. Hmm. And that is probably the you know, the biggest drawback, if you think about it, from a, from a first-time buyer perspective, um, yeah. but they're trading that for certainty and safety. So let's talk about um, kind of the status of your, of, of the company's growth. Yeah. So you've launched first in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and actually, I, I follow uh, Matt Fowler, the CEO of the Triangle MLS that I've yes. known him years yeah um know matt really well and and uh and i see they actually talking about onify uh on their triangle mls uh linkedin page and um and so and stuff so it seems like you've got a connection in the local market there which is great um so why why raleigh first and uh when and where do you go next from there yeah so raleigh you know we looked at each of the 300 odd markets in the u.s every metro and build a scorecard and kind of did a whole bunch of analysis. And basically what we liked about Raleigh was um, it's a market where home prices and rental rates are in a reasonable balance. You can still buy a starter home for 300, 350, maybe $400,000. Um, it's a market that has done really well from a appreciation perspective, right? Which on the one hand is good for investors and on the other hand also creates a challenge for the first time buyers. So it's a market where our solution can really help solve the problem. And then we said, you know, we're building a new construct here. And so rather than launch nationwide right off the bat, let's make sure we understand exactly how the market perceives it, the reaction from the realtor community, the local, you know, closing attorneys, et cetera. Matt uh, with the Triangle MLS, right, has been a great supporter. So we really wanted to make sure that we have a, um, a, a lab, right, that sets us up for success. Um, and a lab where we can get the feedback from the market. And so real estate is local. Um, 
one of the things we did, uh, uh, you know, in Raleigh early on is build relationships with the realtors. Um, we have about 150 now uh, accredited partners, individual realtors who work with first-time buyers who've gone through the training program, who give us the feedback. Um, and when, when we launched um, in in May, we had about 1,500 applications or so in the first three months. We're now a little over 2,000. Um, we've qualified a number of them onto the wait list. We're still fairly tight in terms of our underwriting. Um, we've closed on six transactions, so we have six homes in the portfolio. Um, you know, looking to get to probably ten by the end of the year, and then expand to the rest of North Carolina as a next step. So that'll be by January, mm -hmm. and then uh, add the next couple of states um, in in twenty twenty four. And there we're being a little bit opportunistic um, to also look at kind of the investor side, right? Uh, where is capital that is looking to um, invest in this structure, right? And in, that could be in particular uh, neighborhoods, could be in particular towns. Um, so most likely, you know, kind of the Southeast. So South Carolina is next on the list. Florida is on the list. Uh, Tennessee, Georgia is on the list, right? Um, that's the expansion path. But we're being a little bit opportunistic to say, you know, if there's capital that wants to um, help solve this problem in a particular city or neighborhood, uh, we'll go there as well. I mean, that's 2000 applicants, you know, and I'm hearing this from other similar models where like the demand is, is there, you know, for people that are interested in, you know, trying different models to try to get into a home um, because so many people have been locked out of this, yeah. this market. Um, you know, I, I guess it, it, as, we, as you look at the next couple of years, I mean, how, how do you, uh, it, it seems like we're going to be in this this sort of high rate, high home price environment for a while. How, you know, how do you scale? You know, to beat some of that that, that demand. You know, what what are some of the ways you're kind of thinking about it over the next couple of years? As to what you'd like to be able to, uh, you know, service from that that demand. Yeah. So I think for the next six months, we're still working through the learnings. Right. How do we improve? How do we refine? How do we make sure we build the right communication? And and the you know the content and the material around consumer education, um, and once we have that really figured out, including some of the feedback we're getting from the realtor community, um, it's uh, it's scaling largely through the realtors, right? So I'm working with the Triangle MLS and Matt and his team, uh, but we're looking at the other MLSs in the next couple of markets, right? To say how do we build the the knowledge and understanding around in the realtor community because that's been where the largest amount of traffic and and lead gen for us has come from, right? Mm -hmm. We do a little bit of direct to consumer, uh, largely that's been search, um, you know, some relatively limited uh, online page. So that's the other lever we can pull. And then once folks come in directly to Ownify, we usually pair them with the realtor, right? So one of the accredited agents to then go out and, and shop. Um, so in terms of you know scaling this, I think the demand and the market opportunity is, is massive, right? It's yeah. balancing the two sides, um, the consumer side and the capital side, right? That's going to be the challenge for us is to make sure that we have enough investor capital, right, coming in um, to fulfill the consumer demand. Cool. Well, we have to get some more investors involved then. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably put out a podcast or something and communicate about this. That would be fantastic. Oh, wait, aren't we doing this? <laughs> oh, oh. <Good. laughs> uh, I uh, and uh, another way to raise awareness is to do um, a Forrest Gump style run across the United States and never stop uh, <laughs> PR campaign. I bring that up because I have been told by a reliable source, a.k.a. GNC, our producer, uh, <laughs> that you are an avid runner inspired by Forrest Gump. I, I, don't, I don't know if the Forrest Gump inspiration is correct, but I do love <laughs> running and I've done a bunch of marathons and um uh, you know, you, well, you you see me on camera, so you know I'm a big guy. I'm not the person who finishes first in any of these, right? The goal is always just to finish. Um, so I've picked the marathons in in uh, interesting locations. Um, and I've, yeah, you know, so she said she said you. So just to close this out on a fun personal note, she said you've set a personal goal to run a marathon on every continent. Is that even possible? 
It is possible. Yes. So it turns out um, there is a, there's a, an annual trip to Antarctica where you literally fly in and you land and you run a marathon in a big circle uh, near Union Glacier in Antarctica. So I did that a number of years ago. Uh, super fun. I've done one on the North Pole, which is not a continent, but I've wanted to run around the North Pole because you can run on ice there. Um, and then I've been to uh, Machu Picchu in, in, in South America, uh, run around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. Um, Australia is still on the list. So that's my next challenge. You know, got to get in shape for that. There's a marathon around Uluru, um, the Ayers Rock, right? Um, where you run around the rock um, out in the in the outback. So that's on wow. my list. Hopefully, uh, wow. yeah, 2024, 2025, got to get some time. Um, you know, launching a startup is a lot of work. So I'm probably behind on my training. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I have no room to talk uh, about anything uh, in regards to training since you've you've already done so much there and uh, hey we 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 love the idea of what you're doing would would love to see um, uh, you tackle Onify uh, in in every let's say every state will start there as you do that would be fantastic yeah. on the um, yeah. so yeah thanks for so much for spending the time with us and um, and it's really cool like uh, wish you the best and success Thanks, Keenan. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks, thanks for joining us. us.